Hello everybody. Did you miss me? It's been a while since I've posted up a tutorial. Uh, the wheels are turning, trust me. You are looking at camera two right now. Through it. Anyways, I wanted to kind of stop off for a second, tune up my camera, and take a chance to work on a bit of a secret project. Games Workshop has sent me a review copy of Lionel Johnston, and as I've been working up on him, I wanted to grab just a little bit of, kind of update some of the footage on brush techniques that I've recorded in the past. So I pulled this sword aside and did some recording. Uh, in this video, you're going to see two people. One, slightly nervous guy, adding to the uh, details and narrations before and after some of these brush techniques, and two, guy narrating while two hands are painting. So some of this um, information may repeat but it is worth knowing. So first, let's talk about dilution. That's usually when I go into the two hands painting, but I just maybe can use it as an editing break or something. Before we get into the footage, I want to say that your category of success is very wide. You can dilute the paint down, and as, as long as you have a controllable amount of paint, you can still blend with a dirty paint water consistency of paint. That would be kind of absurd but I think what people are really missing is a controllable amount of paint. You can have the proper dilution, but you can have too much of that mixture on your brush, and it, won't, it will not behave the way that you want it to for these blended brush strokes. So, let us work into some detail on that. All right, now, the footage. Okay, so you can see here we have the mighty lion L. Johnston. I've been blending all over this model, but I wanted to stop and break down a little bit of quick action blending, show you how I've been doing things lately. Um, before we get to Lionel, what I'd like you to do is just have a piece of black plastic card prepped up. Um, it can be a piece of a model, whatever you like. And so the first thing that I want to demonstrate to you is based on dilution. We know that we should add water to our paints to thin them down, correct? But what I like to add to that is we want a controllable amount of that dilution on our brush. You can see as I'm painting along every brush stroke, you know, I just want to demonstrate that as, as I have less and less paint on my brush, I'll give it two or three swipes every time, you can see how eventually I'm creating the blended bl brush stroke. So what you're seeing here is that it is not the dilution that is a problem, it is the amount of that diluted mixture on your brush. So you want to be taking a small controllable amount of paint, right? Like ideally I could grab an amount of paint that matches more closely to some of these later strokes of paint. See, I just grab a small diluted amount. You can blend with dirty paint water, but that would be a little bit absurd. So now you are a master of dilution. Every bit that you pick is just the perfect amount. Challenge number two. What if I didn't thin my paint at all, and I was able to grab such a small amount of paint that in the combination of my moist bristles and the brush touching down on the surface, I would be sort of absorbing a bit of what I was laying down and also adding to the dilution from that little press of moisture. So this is the second challenge. Let our second uh, teacher demonstrate the technique on a flat surface. And also then, what if I could grab the perfect amount of paint? not have to thin things down at all and just by taking a small enough amount of paint through capillary action you can see how I'm sort of picking up some of that paint that I laid down. So I'm able to soak up some of that edge. I didn't use any dilution on the the paint, just uh, a moist brush so I can sweep things around. Wow, that second teacher must be horrendous looking. You can't show their face. I hear there is an iron mask nailed where there once was a smiling visage of a young, upcoming painter, but that will be left for another video. So now you are a master of dilution and ignoring dilution, and I want to share all these things because when I was at Adepticon teaching my classes, I'd break down a technique like wet blending. We'd get through it and then I would have a little more time left over, I have a bit of a 
captive audience. So I wanted to share with people other ways to blend and you know it really comes down to this sort of either or combination like I place my paint on the model and depending on what I see I then kind of course correct and do these different things with my brush. Teaching has you know given me a second set of eyes on everything I'm doing and given me this vocabulary to explain things that have just been kind of instinctive but the other technique that I want to show you has a lot to do with utilizing that capillary action, the area of the bristles that has no paint within it. So we will be picking up a bit of what we're putting down in this third act. Glasses. Now sometimes that won't work out for me as planned. Sometimes I lay some paint down and I want to pick some up so I can quickly lick the brush or if I'm really fast hit the paper towel and pick up that roughened edge just like so. So there's three ways to control the paint. It's always useful to be examining these techniques on a two-dimensional surface. A lot of this is just two-dimensional techniques wrapping them around a three-dimensional surface to enhance the volume. So let's have a look at what it would appear as on a miniature. What I'd like to really show you is how I apply this to a model. I'm going to have a, kind of a brightened power weapon effect. We'll start off by with just some diluted paint. Lay it down in place, kind of letting uh, gravity do a bit of the work for me. You know, I want to kind of lay down a foundation of semi-smooth diluted paint, just adding a little bit more to the mixture. You know, I, I laid some paint down, I see there's not quite enough, so I can grab a little bit from my palette and add it to the water that's already on the model. So there it is, having applied some paint, diluted. I'll just take a small amount of paint, no dilution, just a very, very slight amount. And you see how I sort of drop the paint down in my target area. I move away from that target area, but continue to sweep the paint towards that initial deposit. The idea is that where my brush initially touches down, that's where I leave the largest deposit of paint. So again, just taking a very small amount of paint on my brush, and yeah, we'll, we'll have a sort of red electrical current accumulation right here. So I'll start off just by sweeping it towards the middle from both sides. It isn't quite going to know how to behave, but I'll let this sit and dry. And there we have it. It's going to look bad. The first layers always look bad. Do this at least three times before you tell yourself you failed, before you see a passable result. You can see me sort of placing paint right in that middle area, sweeping at it from both sides. Not bad at all. Dropping it back into the fuller here. I'll go back to a little bit of dilution, just adding some water to the paint once again just want to show you this because I want to display the sort of back and forth nature of painting, the, the sort of either or when I'm blending along. Depending on what happens when I drop the paint down on the surface, you know, my reaction may be different, whether it includes dilution or laying paint down straight off the palette or picking it up and erasing some of it, as I demonstrated before. Speaking of erasing, I want to also show you from the side angle what's happening because a lot of this has to do with your direction of approach. There's an amount of the brush here that has paint and an amount that doesn't have paint. And when I lay both of them down on the surface at the same time, I want you to see from the side angle as well as what that looks like from the top angle, how I'm able to manipulate things and sort of pick up what I'm laying down. That's where the brush licking or wiping off on the paper towel can come into play as well. And generally using a large brush is the way you'd like to go. So I have a little bit of uh, sweeping up to do. I just wanted to demonstrate quickly some brush control techniques and why not do that at this moment on this model as I'm painting it behind the scenes before anyone else gets to see it. Oh yeah, radical. Welcome to YouTube. You gotta be sensational. It gets the views, makes people want to do the, the pass around. So I hope you enjoyed seeing these three various routes to blending. I use all of them at once. 
most most of the time and yeah just throwing a little bit of action in place of me working on the model and uh, I also want to share the end results with you. This video was made just to break down brush control but I do want to show you an end result so you can see kind of what this leads into. You know it's it's had a lot of layering and lightning bolt lines applied, a thin a thin glaze of a red ink wash, uh, you know, just the various treatments to really bring things together. So more about brush control, but it's worth sharing and showing where this is going and featuring the lion. Ain't he cool? I will have a lot more to say about the lion. You can tell from the paint job, um, a lot of thought went into this. I've been trying to do things a little differently and I was able to spin some theories composition, color theory, etc. I'm going to do a separate video talking about that and just how I kind of analyze and add fuel to my imagination, a sort of mental checklist when I'm creating a composition. But until that time, I hope you enjoy this video. Please let me know how you feel in the comments section down below. Please uh, consider supporting this Patreon. I appreciate all of that. And yeah, we have a lot left to do. So until the next time we meet, Remain unchained.